Welcome to Zoom presentations for your MBA and beyond. These are technical recommendations primarily, but I want to give you some qualitative recommendations to start off. First, as a reminder, whenever you're making a presentation, it is always to do two things. Number one, you need to tell a cohesive story. Your audience must be able to follow along with what you're saying, and for the progression of your initial logic to your final ask to be consistent and understandable. The second part, your final ask, always be closing. You should be taking a sales mentality to your presentations regardless of the context. So every presentation sells something. It sells an idea, sells a product, sells your capabilities. It makes you look good to your boss. Uh, any of these things are fine, but make sure that you are accomplishing something with every presentation that you do. This video will help you with a few things. It should help you with online job interviews, sales presentations and client presentations, leading webinars, and business school presentations, which is primarily why I made this video in the first place. So now on to our technical recommendations. This is a technical video, so I won't have any recommendations for slide craft, storyboarding, audience engagement, etc. There are a ton of great videos out there for that. Technical recommendation number one, your eyes should be around the two-thirds level of the screen. Right now, you should see that with my eyes in this current framing. And we do not see that in this picture right here. This is the standard floating head view of Zoom that you see almost every day. Most people sit just like this, kind of a, a guillotine view of the neck at the bottom. Uh, you don't want your eyes in the middle of the screen like that. This is a little better. Her eyes are a bit above the, the middle of the screen. This would suffice for decent quality, but I recommend you go ahead and give it that TV anchor look of a professional interview, a uh, professional TV shoot, and have your eyes just like him at this two-thirds mark of the screen. And there we go. So this guy just got his act together, and now he's at the two-thirds mark. Technical recommendation number two, make sure that your camera is at eye level. And you want to talk to the camera. This is a big part of sales. You want to be engaging uh, to your audience. So camera at eye level. Again, you can see that a bit with me right now. I am looking right into the camera. I've got a prop on some books on my desk in front of me. And we can see it here with this gentleman. His eyes are exactly at the top of his iMac screen where the camera is on those iMacs. Uh, this gentleman, you can't see it, but he's got his podcasting and video set up, and he is looking directly at his DSLR camera set up as well. It's a great framing. Technical recommendation number three, lighting. So lighting is tricky if you're doing, you know, what I'm going to call amateur video production, which is most of us doing our Zoom presentations. We want to stay away from backlighting. That is, uh, you know, pitfall number one, two, and three. And so obviously I'm, I'm picking some, some silly examples to show backlighting, but we don't want, right now I'm standing um, with the window in front of me. I'm, I'm actually getting a lot of natural light. That's how I'm lighting myself right now. But I don't want to flip-flop that. I don't want to be shooting with my back at the window and you looking at me where I'm going to be dark and you're going to see this bright, blown out, white background um, of, of the city of Washington, D.C. in the background. Uh, same deal here. We can see the sun. We can see how uh, backlighting causes this visual trick. Now, this guy has perfect lighting. Obviously, it's a great, great photo, but really this is just the result of having your lighting in front of you. So if you're at home and it's dark, you take a couple of lamps and you put them behind your, your uh, uh, computer and then the light will be shining directly on you. And if you're in a situation like I am right now where I've got access to natural lights, nice big windows, you go ahead and open those up and face out to them. That way the light will be hitting you and giving you a three-dimensional appearance. Um, it takes a lot of work on a TV set to have the lighting work and have characters pop out. And obviously we're not gonna do that, but we wanna make it look as good as we can given our technical limitations. Technical recommendation number four, wherever possible, use a microphone to sound more professional. Um, I'm recording on a MacBook Pro. That actually has really good onboard microphone capability, but it's still not the same as having a high quality lavalier microphone like you see here. Uh, it doesn't have to be expensive um, right now. 
I'm recording on about a, a, a $70 Sennheiser, but I've also got a $28, um, uh, what's it, Ceramonic. Uh, it's about 28 bucks. Um, that works great. It, it works fine. You don't need a, you know, a big professional brand name one. But the microphone, if you want to sound good, the microphone is going to reduce hiss and tinniness and give a lot more crispness to the voice. You don't want people straining to hear you. you know, first rule of sales, don't make it hard on the person watching you. And I've got a recommendation here on screen. I'll also put a link below to both the Ceramonic Lav Micro U3A, that's your budget choice, and the Sennheiser, which is kind of a, a mid-tier choice. And prices go up from there. So you, know, you can also just go to your online retailer of choice and plug in find good reviews and you know spend whatever your your price range is general this isn't quite technical pitfalls but general pitfalls that i see by far the most common is this no reading off a script ditch the monotone find an engaging voice cadence to sound authentic how many times have we seen that in a presentation? We've seen it a bunch. I see it with my students. I even see it in some professional presentations, though uh, obviously um, far more infrequently. Better yet, be authentic. Talk, use your emotions properly in a limited way, but use your emotions properly. Talk to the camera and be engaged with the audience. So that's a little more legwork up front to memorize what you're gonna say or perhaps not memorize, but have a very clear idea of what you're going to say and how you're going to say it. And then pitfall number two, this is really only for MBA students, but please, for goodness sakes, pretend that you work together as a team. I know people see bad examples in the real world. They see it uh, in the presentations that are done around them. Let me assure you, these are not good presentations. As soon as you hear, next slide please, something is wrong. It means that a team hasn't gelled. Whoever is clicking forward on the slides should know the cues. They shouldn't have to wait for their teammate, who they're supposed to know well and have to have practiced with, to click. They know where their teammate has gotten to, and if they're clicking, they should go ahead and click preemptively. Um, so this is a sign of bad teamwork, whether in a professional presentation or in an MBA presentation. So I really push my students um, to practice with their teams, get in the flow, and let the audience know that you've taken the time to gel as a team. So wh why did I produce this video? Number one is just as training. Uh, I want students to have access to decent technical advice. It's not hard um, and it's not expensive, but just putting a little bit of effort will make you look better, sound better. And then it's, you know, the, the, the negative side is more, you know, unfortunately, MBA students get used to hearing bad presentations, both in their MBA program and at work, especially as junior employees. So seeing the people at your level and say one level above making presentations, these are simply not good presentations overall. And I don't want my students to aspire to that. I want you to aspire to making Steve Jobs level presentations that are going to help you get what you want in your career and help your company do what it's supposed to do. So there you go. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to hearing from you in the comments below.